All right, so the first thing I recommend you learn is the After Effects camera track to Blender workflow. If you learn these steps, you'll be able to take the tracking data from After Effects into Blender, and that'll allow you to use Blender as a free 3D compositing tool to track 3D objects into your footage. Now you don't actually need After Effects for this. If you want, you can use Blender's built-in tracking system, but if you like keeping After Effects in your workflow from start to finish, you can use this free plugin, which I'll link below. It's super easy to set up. Just follow the steps on the download page. I also have a tutorial on my second channel, which walks you through setting this up step by step. If you're interested, I'll link that down below. Number two is creating basic shaders. So if you're brand new to Blender, I recommend you start by learning how to load in image textures. There's tons of free image maps that you can download online from sites like Polyhaven. So for example, if you need a brick road or you need an environment texture or a decal texture, you can just download the image maps and just connect the dots essentially in Blender to have those pop up. Now it's important to know how to load these different maps and nodes in yourself, but you can cheat with this by going to edit, preferences and enabling the node wrangler add-on which comes with all versions of Blender by default. Once you do that, you can just select your principal shader and click control shift T. Select the maps that you want loaded in and then click OK and Node Wrangler will connect them all to the right spot and even label the different nodes for you, which is a huge time saver. I recommend you build on this by learning some nodes like color ramp, noise texture, mapping nodes, bump nodes, normal nodes. Those will allow you to add some extra detail to have further control over the texture and you can even procedurally generate textures yourself so that you're not reliant on always needing to go and get an image map from somewhere else. Three is lighting and if you have a background in cinematography, you know how important lighting is. The same goes with 3D. One of the most overlooked aspects with lighting is HDRIs. It's very important to nail the reflections and environmental lighting, especially when it comes to compositing 3D objects into your footage. I recommend you use this free HDRI extension so that you can toggle through the look that you want to find what works best. If you want perfect lighting when it comes to compositing your 3D object into your footage, it's also a good idea to capture your own HDRI images on set. There's a bunch of tutorials showing you how to do this for free. It just takes a bit more legwork. Or you can buy one of those 360 cameras, which allow you to just set it up on a tripod on set so that when you bring it into Blender, it'll have the perfect reflections and lighting that you need. Now, two little bonus tips here. Here, if you guys go and watch cinematography lighting tutorials in real life, you can apply those lighting setups to your 3D renders, which is really nice. So keep that in mind. 3D is just mimicking real life. And the second thing, if you'd like to make the lighting process easier, I have a plugin, Director 3D. It's made for music video creators. And in that plugin, I have a full lighting studio setup with a bunch of presets that can help you save a bunch of time. Number four is creating a cinematic look. I think this is important for video editors to understand because it's very much the same principles that you would use to improve a look in After Effects or in camera on set. Things like adding motion blur to your renders, things like adding depth of field in your 3D camera, things like understanding the graph editor and controlling the animation of your keyframes to make them look more natural and lifelike. These are all key points for cinematic footage and realistic editing effects. So make sure you guys learn these in Blender if you want cleaner results. I'm gonna hop in and show you some of the basics of what I'm talking about here. All right, so I'm just going to delete all of this and just recreate that little time lapse from scratch. So I'm going to use one of the templates here from my plugin that I just mentioned. Again, you can use Sketchfab or any 3D model if you just wanna test and learn. So I'll use my viewport to find a spot that I like, like right here, and then I'll click Shift A and we'll add in a camera. Now I want my camera to be where my viewport is, so I can click Control Alt Numpad Zero, or since I'm using my plugin, I have this little pie menu, I can just click Align Camera to View. So now with the camera selected, I'll go ahead and click this yellow square here and I can just adjust my camera view. And once you've done that, you can click on the object data properties for the camera. And you're going to have a lot of the same options that you have in a normal real life camera. Things like depth of field, things like your focal length. So I'll toggle on depth of field and you can use the eyedropper if you'd like to just select the object. And then you can just mess around with the f-stop for the aperture. Or if you want, you can just go manual so I can uncheck this and then just manually adjust the distance, manually adjust the focal length like that. And that way you're going to get that cinematic blur. Now we'll talk a bit about the graph editor because it's a great tool for actually adding onto your keyframes. Because you guys are video editors, you probably know the basics of setting a keyframe. For example, if I go to my object properties, here's all my transform data. I can keyframe all of these. And let's say we just go in the timeline, move, and then move this, set a keyframe. So there's your basic keyframe just moving in. 
but you can use the graph editor just like you would in After Effects to make those animations a lot better. So what we can do is we can again set keyframes for our camera and then we'll switch over to the graph editor. And once you've set those keyframes, you're going to see all of these different line graphs for those keyframe values. So you'll see if I don't have any keyframes, you're not going to see anything. So make sure you keyframe first so that you can actually see that data. We'll open up on the left and we'll select what we want to do. So I'll go with X rotation first. And instead of animating this by hand, I can just go over to this add modifier button. If you're not seeing that, click N and we can just add in a noise modifier. So you're going to see it's super shaky, but what we can do is just raise the scale on this and that's going to sort of ease it out. And if I find it, there it is. So there's our X rotation. We can lower the strength. And you can do that with any of these different values. So I could do it with the Y rotation, the Z rotation. So let's try with Z. We'll add in noise. We'll smooth that noise out. You can also do this with the X, Y, and Z location. So if you want the camera actually moving and not just shaking, we can go to Y location. And again, we just add in noise. Scale it up. And then you mess around with the strength for how much you want the camera to move. So you have some nifty little tricks for animating. A lot of things that we use in After Effects, a lot of things that we do in camera, all of the same core values just in Blender. Number five is geometry nodes. And I've talked about this in the context of creating procedural environments in the past. The ability to create these modular environments that you have full control over, that you can change and use for multiple projects on the fly can help you a ton when it comes to compositing or creating B-roll footage for your editing. You can also create hundreds of different motion graphic effects just with geometry nodes, which can open up an entire new world of things that you can do with your editing. You can make mushrooms sprout out of the ground and composite those into your footage, or you can add or extend the background elements, or you can add in 3D animated elements to your footage just to spice them up a bit. There's a ton of things you can do. I don't think you need to be an expert with geometry nodes, so it's not something that you need to be studying 24 seven to try and become the best at, but I do believe if you search for some tutorials and you get the idea of what you can do with geometry nodes, it's going to help you out a bunch in the long run. I'll link some geometry node tutorials in the description, some by me, some by others that can help you get a good start on all the things that you can accomplish and create with geo nodes. So if you guys did enjoy this video, consider leaving a like, subscribe for more content like this. I've been trying to create a good balance of beginner friendly content as well as some more intermediate or advanced content for specific niche things. So let me know what it is that you specifically want to see from this channel and I'll be happy to work towards making whatever it is you want to see. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.